Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is it working? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Oh, I need to be louder. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, welcome, everybody. Um, cross talks are out, and they're downstairs, so if you get a cross talk, you can collect that today. I know of one birthday. It's Sam's birthday on Saturday. My, my grandson's five this week. Can you imagine how excited he is? Um, anybody else? Okay, John. Could we have happy birthday? Thank you. And happy birthday, Emma, who's joining us online. <laughs> um, right. And you can see we've got the lovely banner back. With the I'm going to talk about that yes, in a second. I mean, yeah, don't steal that there. That's part no, of the service. But I, I <laughs> love that banner. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, it's great to see you all. For those that uh, don't know, yesterday was the URC Wessex Synod Open Day at Holicombe Steam Fair down near Liphook. It was a fabulous day, and the good news is it's at the top of a hill. So my fear of being knee-deep in mud wasn't there because it was quite dry. Um, but the sun was glorious. And what we were asked to do, each church in the Synod was asked to produce a banner and get it there. And High Cross being High Cross said, oh, we've sent a banner in, but you have to find it. So I went to find the banner, and this is the wonderful banner that Sam and the, the families have done. And um, you just see it. I'm going to read it out because you won't see it from there. It says, High Cross Camberley, all are welcome here. And then picked, the children have drawn around the hands and coloured them in. So a whole diverse mix of people. And they say, love your foes even if they don't love you from Lola. We're strong. Uh, God loves us. God is with us. And I love church. And uh, Dale just wrote Dale, but hey... Where's Dale? <laughs> um, but that's really good. So this is going to be in church um, and around the place from now on. So do have a look at it. But it's wonderful that we're able to be represented at the Steam Fair. And it's got to then go back to Synod in, Sept in October. So all the banners are going to be up around the Synod for the Synod meeting. So, but it's just wonderful we were represented. And we had a whole mix of banners that were there. Some that were made by banner groups, which were spectacular. But the most moving were the ones that the children and families had done from across the Synod. And it was really special. So yesterday, over 700 people gathered together and worshipped and just enjoyed everything the Steam Fair has to offer. And I have to say, I was shattered. <laughs> it was a long day, but it was fabulous. Um, but it's also nice to remind us that we're part of something bigger. We forget when we worship here with people that we're just a part of a huge, a big, not huge, that's the wrong term, a big organization. And it's also interesting to talk to other churches who say, we're really struggling, we only have six people or a dozen people worshiping on a Sunday. And then I have to bite my tongue slightly and say sometimes the numbers we get is wonderful. But it is great to be reminded we're part of bigger denominations, the United Reformed Church and the Methodist Church, and that's something to celebrate. So as we come together today, let's just pray. We've come to worship a powerful God, the God who raised Christ from the dead, who seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every other name, now or in the future. May the eyes of our hearts be open today, with wisdom and revelation from the Holy Spirit, to know, really know, the hope to which he has called us and the glorious plans he has for all creation. We've come to worship a powerful God, so let us turn to him in awe and adoration. Amen. And so as we come to worship, we're going to stand and sing together our first hymn, that wonderful hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Let's stand and sing.
So as we come to our second week of our series on worship in the world, we're going to watch another video this week to see, titled Come Worship See. This is a vital invitation to us as a church community. So let's just be still, watch the video, and see where it takes us this week. Things vying for me, swarming, gathering, swirling, spiraling, fighting for my time, calling for my eyes, crowding my vision, demanding my energy, hungry for my life, shouting loud, storming my mind. A still, small voice beneath the noise undercuts the storm, whispering, urging, inviting. Come, worship, see. Come, worship, see. Worshipping you changes perspective. Lift our eyes to you. Our eyes made new, everything filtered through the lens of your goodness. Scattered, we carry your presence with us, guiding our steps, changing atmospheres, navigating, discerning worldly strife, filling and sharing your holy life, understanding priorities right. In your light, do we see light? Worship helps calm our daily lives. When we pause in life and offer prayer and worship God, our lives calm down. And so let's come together in prayer. Paul wrote to the Ephesians that he had not stopped giving thanks for them, and he kept remembering them in his prayers. Who do you need to give thanks to God for today? Who needs to be remembered in your prayers? And so in the stillness of this place, Bring that person before God in the silence. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Give us a vision of your hope. Paul prayed that he might know the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Who do you know that needs to know God for the first time? Or who needs to know God better? And in the stillness, pray for that person. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Give us a vision of your hope. Paul asks that they might know God's power which raised Christ from the dead and seated him over every authority ruler and title. When you look at the world, do you see rulers and authorities using their power for good or evil? So we pray for leaders and ask God to help you trust him, that he is the ultimate authority. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Give us a vision of your hope. Paul reminded them that God is the head of the church and all things are under his rule in, and so in your everyday life and on the front line. In what issues do you need to entrust Jesus? In the silence, offer to him prayers for your struggles and the situations you find yourself in. And so we thank you, God, that in all those moments of everyday life, you are with us, that you walk that journey with us, and that we're able to worship you wherever we are, and we're able to bring you our praise wherever we are. Yet we confess there are times when we get it wrong, we don't say the right thing, or we fail to glimpse your presence. And we pray in those times you would forgive us and you would surround us with your love. 
And may the eyes of our hearts be enlightened to know the hope to which he has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance, in incomparably great power for us who believe. So open the eyes of our heart, Lord, and give us a vision of your hope. And so we pray together the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we're going to stand and sing together that wonderful hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Open the Eyes of My Heart. Let's stand and sing. Open the eyes The reading is Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses... Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. And this is where he's re-establishing the vision for his recipient's identity and reasserting the nature of the faith life into which they have been called. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, 
with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sue. And so I just invite you to pause for a moment, to think about the different lenses through which you see the world. And as you do that, just be still and watch the images, because we all see the world in different ways and at different times. And so I just want you to pause, to reflect, and to think about how you see the world. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. So we come to the second week of our series on worship, whole life worship. And worship helps us to see the bigger picture of what, of what God is doing in and through us in the world. If you wanted the Apostle Paul to pray for the church today, what would you want him to pray? What would he ask him to do? Our prayers tell us what's most important to us. Tell me your prayers and I'll tell you what really matters to you. We've heard so many times. The letter to the church in Ephesus was most likely designed to be read in so many churches. So we might be able to see what Paul thinks ordinary churches need. What we discover is that Paul believed that they, we, need to see better. He prays for a whole life vision that sees Jesus filling everything in every way. No area of life was to be untouched by him. It's a big ask 
and a big prayer. In the passage that Sue read for us, it's one long cascade of praise at the start of the passage. And Paul wants the Ephesians to be captivated not by all the temples of Diana or the symbols of the Roman Empire, but by the sense of what God has done for them. He knows that this is what will help those early Christians stand firm and act courageously. And in the midst of this brilliant passage, he prays for the churches. And that prayer is so relevant for us today as it was then. So he prays several things. That they might have a compelling vision. This is something that's familiar to a lot of us, isn't it? I tried to find an eye chart, but trying to find them that's copyright free was quite hard. But I don't know about you, but I dread going for eye tests. It's worse than, it used to be like the hearing test in the army, but it's worse because, is it this lens or this? They both look the same. I can't tell. And when it comes to looking at the numbers on the wall, I'm fine until I take my glasses off and wonder which room I'm in. <laughs> We've been there. And then he says, you know, the usual, I'll cover one eye and see if that helps. No, I'm even, I can't see, le <laughs> no, it doesn't work. But we all have that. We can have our eyes tested so we can see. And Paul uses a whole range of words and metaphors to paint a vivid picture of how our salvation is linked to God's wider purposes for the whole of his creation. It says in verse 10, oh, no it doesn't. It says this in verse 10, I've got the wrong bit in front of me. And he wants us to see just how comprehensive our salvation is. And then there's a renewing vision. Uh, James, then there's a renewing vision. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when we can see more clearly. Again, like being at the opticians. Do you know when that lens is just right? Is it this one or is it this one? And you go, oh, actually, that one is crisper. And the first thing that goes through my mind is, is it a change and how much is it going to cost me? <laughs> and everyone's going, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So Paul then prays that we'll know God better in verse 17. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him better. That we'll appreciate the God who has called us to live for him. Alongside this prayer, there's also one that we might grasp a vision of our future. The hope of verse 18. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? That we might know of who is with us in those saints and of the power that's within us, the power of that same raised Jesus that raised Jesus from the dead. If God answered that fantastic prayer, how would it change our lives today? And so we need a whole life vision. One that helps us see more clearly. If Ephesus had its own story of how the world worked, but the Christians embraced that whole life vision, it was the vision of Jesus ruling over all. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. In verses 22 to 23 he says, And he's put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This great power shows that no area of life can remain untouched once we see the vision of Jesus ruling over all. It becomes totally like those new glasses we get. We're nervous because we think our eyesight's changed. New lenses come and we see things more clearly. And then we go and buy them. And that day when we change our glasses, it becomes a new vision. Or you do like we do. Last time I went to the opticians, I came out with my head hung low and said to Sue, I've got to have varifocals. The time has come. 
I was told I was getting old. It's the way it goes. Ten minutes later, Sue came out and said, I've got to have very vocals as well. <laughs> so we were equal. My goodness, they're more expensive, aren't they, very vocals? <laughs> but it makes life more clearly. And it helps you see. And once you get very vocals, you understand how the world can be in focus at different times. And I certainly know when that comes to reading on a piece of paper, I can no longer glance down as quickly as I used to, but I have to allow a few seconds for my eyes to focus, to see what I'm saying and to see what's written. But through that, we can see God acting in the world in a whole new way. Our vision becomes sharper. And I don't know if you can quite see through the lens there that it's a beautiful scene down one of the sounds in New Zealand of the world in total focus. So when we worship together, we're able to see things differently. Prayers, songs, creeds, readings, testimonies, and more remind us of God's bigger story and give us the opportunity to be refreshed with God's resurrection power. And this empowers us and inspires us to live that vision of life, that life out on the front lines, that life that is beyond these four walls, that life that is in the everyday glorifying God in everything we do. This goal of prayer confidence, that greater confidence that's in the Ephesians, that the Ephesian citizens needed, is something that means so much to us today. Last week we spoke about looking for God and worshipping God in the everyday. And let's go one step further this week. As we see God and we worship God, let's bring those things to prayer. The things that we see, the things that we do, and see how through prayer the world comes into greater focus. Is there another slide, James? I can't remember. There's not. But it brings us into greater focus and what that then means for us as a church. As we focus on what's out there, as we have new lenses, the world is something that we know that we have to interact in. And so as we interact, I want to invite you just to reflect on some words of a creedal prayer, a prayer that can be said and shared by us all. It's something that in many churches, week by week, they say the creed, it's not in our tradition. But as we focus on the world, as we see the world through new lenses, this is something I hope that will help us today. So if you would say the words in the bright yellow, I'll say the words in the duller yellow. So together we say, we believe in God the Creator, who spoke everything into being by his word and his spirit, the physical and the spiritual, the extraordinary and the everyday. Open our eyes, God, to see your big story. We believe in God the just, who sees our mistakes and our fallenness, who judges sin and will not right, will right every wrong. Open our eyes, God, to see your big story. We believe in God the incarnate, who came as one of us in Jesus Christ, who knows our weakness and yet chose obedience. Open our eyes, God, to see your big story. We believe in God the Saviour, who reconciled all things to himself on the cross and commits us to the message of reconciliation. Open our eyes, God, to see your big story. We believe in God the Restorer, who will come again to renew creation and cause us to play our part as we long for that completeness. Open our eyes, God, to live your big story. Amen. So open our eyes this day and this week, Lord, as we look out with a new clear vision of a lens in focus to see the world that's around us, a world that we can have an impact in and change as Christians. Let us live the prayer to the Ephesians. Let us go out and embody all that Christ has called us to be. So whatever you do this week, bring to God the prayers
of those things that you see. Amen. And so we're going to sing together again as we come into our intercessions after these, this hymn. We sing, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Lord, we ask that you we that we ask that you hear our prayers this day. Hear us now as we pray for our world. We pray for places and people in need of your love. For so many it is a frightening place, frightened by war, fighting going on around them, unable to resist but can only stay and live in its consequences. For those facing hunger and starvation from lack of rain or war. For those who hunger for knowledge through education. For those whose worship and praise of your name endangers their lives for fear of the authorities. And for those persecuted for how they love and live. Give them strength, O God, that your love will encourage and strengthen their life and faith. Lord, we ask that you hear us now as we pray for our country. We pray for the young people in our community, for those undertaking their school exams at this time, when many will be striving to gain grades which will take them to employment or into college or university. We pray for those for whom this will be their final time in education and about to go into this uncertain world into work or further education. For many, the road ahead may not be easy, but we pray for those who find it a difficult transition from education that they, they will persevere in order to accomplish their goals. 
Within our communities, Lord, we pray for those in need of your shelter as they face hardship and struggles in their everyday lives. Struggles through poverty, through ill health, or through loneliness. Lord, that you, are, we ask you to hear us now as we pray for your people, that your love and your grace will encourage and strengthen life and faith. We also thank you, Lord, for all who proved support for us in our lives, those who are there when we struggle with health issues or with somewhere we can find food and when we can't afford to buy it. Those who provide advice on how to budget on a small income or overcome through law those who would persecute us. Lord, we thank you that, that we live in a country that demonstrates how electoral process can be achieved with choices of candidates. And we pray for those countries where such a system is corrupted by leadership, which does not tolerate a challenge to their authority against the will of the people. Lord, we pray for those who have been elected and we ask that you give them wisdom and honesty in their work. We thank you, Lord, that so many gathered together at the URC Synod Big Day Out yesterday. We especially remember and thanks those who organised the event and the staff of Holicom who, made, who helped make the day a success. In these events, we remember that your church is many people from different backgrounds coming together as one family in Christ and enjoying the glory of the countryside in the glory of a spring green day. And Heavenly Father, we bring before you now, in the silence of our hearts, those whom we love and worry about, including those named in the list in the notices, as well as those we know in hospital or undergoing medical treatment. Father, we offer these prayers knowing that through your love working in our lives, your kingdom may come and your will will be done. Amen. Thank you, Don. And so we come to our communion. And as we come together to celebrate at the table, I remind you that all who love the Lord Jesus Christ are welcome to share in this feast. I also remind you that it's gluten-free bread and alcohol-free wine, so all are very, very welcome. And so we stand to sing as we prepare. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me.
I welcome you to this table today and remind you that all who love the Lord Jesus Christ are welcome to share in bread and wine. Jesus was often a guest. He shared many meals with his friends and they long remembered the words at the table. Though some disapproved of the company he kept, Jesus ate and drank with all kinds of people and showed everyone the love of God. Wherever people met together, Jesus was glad to be welcomed and to be fed. So today, we are the guests of Jesus. He welcomes us, whoever we are and whatever we bring, and he will feed us at his table. Old or young, rich or poor, joyful or in sorrow, Jesus invites us to share bread and wine with him, to remember the story of his life and death, and to celebrate his presence with us today. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with 12 of his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. And the Gospel writer tells us what happened that night. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So we are the friends and disciples of Jesus today. He invites us to break bread together, to remember him, and to pray that his kingdom will come. So let's just bow our heads in prayer. We bring this bread and this wine to the table of Jesus. With them we bring ourselves, all that we are and all that we own. May the ordinary become holy, and heaven be open to the people of earth, and may God be blessed forever. And so the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts and we lift them to the Lord, for it's right to give the Lord our God our thanks. So loving God, the world you made is beautiful and full of wonder. You made us with all your creatures, and you love all that you have made. You gave us the words of your prophets, the stories of your people through the generations, and the gathered wisdom of many years. You gave us Jesus, your Son, to be born and to grow up in difficult times when there was little peace. He embraced people with your love and told stories to change us all. He healed those in pain and brought to life those who had lost hope. He made friends with anyone who would listen and loved even his enemies. It was for these things that he suffered, for these things that he died. And he was raised from death and lives with you forever. You give us the Holy Spirit to teach and to strengthen us, to remind us of Jesus Christ, and to make us one in him. For all these gifts, we thank you. And we join you with, join with all your people in earth and in heaven in joyful praise, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So we praise you that we are here today around the table of Jesus. We've heard the good news of your love and the cross is a sign of your arms stretched out in love for us. And the empty tomb declares your love stronger than death. And so we proclaim that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this wine and upon us, your people, that Christ may be with us and we may be made ready to live for you and to do what you ask of us today and every day to come. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the love of the Creator, 
one God, to whom all glory and praise forever. Amen. And so we break this bread to share in the one body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. And Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. And so eat this bread and drink this wine. The bread is the bread of life. The wine is the cup of blessing. And so eat and drink drink as you receive and just be still and think about how you see Jesus through the lens of the world today. Amen.
So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears that have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the eyes that have seen your great love shine with the light of hope. May the tongues that have sung your praise also speak the truth. May the feet that have walked in your house ever walk in the light. And may the bodies that have tasted your living body be restored to newness of life. Thanks be to God for his gift beyond words. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn, Come Set Your Rule and Reign. Let's stand and sing together. you that there's a retiring collection for the work of High Cross as we go downstairs and that of course there's refreshments downstairs. Do stay and chat and uh, just get to know each other better. It's fabulous. So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Lord we thank you for the gifts that are given for the work of your church here at High Cross and in the community. We ask your blessing on those who have given them freely. They stay and through regular giving and we ask that your love would shine through them. 
and that they would always be used for your purpose. We have laid our burdens down in the presence of the living God. We've been nourished for our journey in the presence of the living God. We've taken on the armour of Christ in the presence of the living God. Now lead us, guide us, defend us as we go into your world in the name, your name and for your sake, O loving, living God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Spirit, be with each one of us this day and always. Amen. Now our worship has ended. May our service begin. Amen.